Hey guys, Lucas here again. This is going to be a video on Pango itemization, where I'm going to try to cover the general build paths that I follow for when I go mid lane or off lane. But I also want to delve into the reasons why I might stray off this build. Uh, oftentimes this has to do with my role in the game and how I see my team winning this game or what items I need to buy in order to be the most effective to my team. So I'm going to try to provide you with as many examples as I can, and I hope you guys enjoy. Alright, so this first game is going to be from a game where I played mid lane. I went mid lane against an Ember Spirit. You're going to find that I started, generally I start with just a Quelling Blade, three branches, and I go for the Fairy Fire. Um, and then I'll typically get a Salve in the lane. I can just buy it right out if I want to, or I can get a bottle. Uh, I've been experimenting with different things though, so you'll see here I went an Oove, which has gone surprisingly well against the Ember Spirit, as you would expect since we're both melee heroes. But then I'll go for my bottle. I'll get a Javelin and then my regular boots, and sometimes I'll go Power Treads. It kind of depends on the game for me. It's kind of more of an itemization thing. Do I find myself in positions where I'll be auto-attacking a lot, or do I think that it's going to be a very farm-heavy game? Uh, we'll get into Power Treads later on, but I'm just going to go over this real quick. So I'll try to go for my Diffusal. Then after Diffusal, I'll determine if I want a Aghanims first or a Basher. Uh, so this will very much depend on the game. Again, it's 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 whether you want the extra damage that you can provide in a team fight with an eggs, or whether you want the extra disable for someone who maybe is a juggernaut TPing out, or maybe you just need you just have the damage and you just want to stun and lock down enemy heroes more. So that's kind of the decision making process between buying a basher or an eggs first, but usually I do end up with them both. And then I will probably typically upgrade to an abyssal, but it does again. It does really depend on the game. So you could buy you could buy Lincolns, you could buy Shivas, you can buy uh, again this Abyssal. It, it it really depends, and that's gonna kind of be the theme of this video is gonna be that it depends on on the game and how the game state is flowing. All right. So before I get into decision making behind why I buy certain items, again here is the build for when you go offlane Pango. Typically for me at least. So I've done some experimenting with starting Oove recently, but sometimes I've also just bought it as the lane was going on. Most of the time, it's, it's just really good. Uh, I, I did buy it in this lane as well. Um, so I want to talk about the importance of buying power treads when I play offlane Pango. I'm going to show you a replay in a second as well. It's going to try to help prove my point. But oftentimes in the offlane, it's a lot about dueling the opponent. Um, as opposed to mid lane, where you kind of just both get levels. And then there becomes a point in the lane where you can kind of just kill the whole wave with Javelin and go farm jungle. And it's not really as much dual heavy. Whereas in the off lane, you kind of gain levels slower. Um, you have end up having more gold where you want to put towards items. But you want to put those towards items that can make the enemy carry have a harder game. And enable you to pressure him more out of the lane. So that's kind of why I prefer power treads. Again, I'll show you an example later on. But I do end up getting the power treads very early for the extra pressure in lane and then I go Vlad's most of the time and then I'll probably go Diffusal and then from here I end up going Basher. Uh, something different as well is that uh, the talents that I'll take in this game I will end up taking the roll talent um, at level 15 and after the mana regen and then later on again I'll get the, the regular talents as well like normal but um, and then from here it depends a lot on the game so here I'll get either a Shiva's I could get a BKB like I do in this game, um, or, or maybe I could upgrade this into an Abyssal, but it, it honestly just depends. Alright, so I realize that when talking about item builds, there are a lot of ways that certain games can go that can influence your decision making on what items you want to buy. So I'm kind of just going to put this game on in the background and talk about a certain uh, a few things at least as to what influences my item build, specifically in the offlane first of all. So in the offlane, I kind of want to first uh, attack the point about why I'm not buying Maelstrom on offlane Pango. So people who've been watching the stream for a long time will know that, or if you're keeping up with me for a long time, will know that I very much favor this damage build. And it's actually only until recently, I guess the few last few months, where I've been actually even going the the Vlads, um, maybe a Halberd for the team, or kind of these more team-oriented items, and actually taking a, a better look at how my team is going to win the game, and what things I can do from an item perspective to make us win the game easier or make my job uh, or my role in the game a bit more effective. So um, to do this, 
I've looked at Vlad's. And you guys might be thinking, oh, that's crazy. He actually didn't even think Vlad's was good until recently. And I don't really have a, a reason for that as, as to just I have a preference towards the damage pango. I think it's a lot more fun to play. But I have come to realize that there are certain games where you need to play a role that is a bit more supportive or a role that enables your cores a bit more. And I know that this kind of might be, I might be a little uh, preaching to the choir a bit here when I talk about offlane pango. Uh, kind of the offlane role in general is a more supportive role that kind of enables your mid lane and your carry to farm and, and play their best. And the items that you would typically buy on a pause three hero would, would serve that purpose. It would be like a blink dagger to catch your enemies. Say you have it, say you're playing axe or centaur, you'd want to blink on the enemies and kill them. Or maybe you're playing like a more supportive hero that would buy an item like a solar crest or something like that in order to make your carry attack faster or something. So I've kind of looked at that and I tried to apply it to Pango. And in this case, Vlad's would help a lot in most games, especially if you're playing with like a troll or some sort of other hero that greatly benefits from the lifesteal. But regardless of if they even benefit much from the lifesteal, it helps a lot in terms of making yourself more tanky with the additional armor. And the lifesteal on Pango is also pretty nice. So that's kind of led me down the Vlad's path, but also I've very much removed Maelstrom from my core build as offlane Pango, because you just don't have the space on the map to farm. So something about the offlane position is that just being pause 3 on a team means that you're the, you're kind of the third player that should be getting like the most farm. Or I, don't, I don't know exactly how it works, but um, you're the third priority. Yeah, that, that's, that's how it works. So you're the third priority in terms of who should be getting farm on the map. So you should be taking more dangerous farm, you should be making space for your teammates, and to do that, you shouldn't really be buying a Maelstrom and consuming a lot of this farm. So from here, I kind of ended up buying the, the power, going power treads Vlad's, and then being like, okay, well, Diffusal's a really great item for fighting. So if I end up wanting to go this fighting build, which you can still go, you can still make a lot of space for your team while not being like the tankiest person alive. I mean, Pango does actually have a lot of kind of tankiness in the hero himself just by his kit in terms of being so survivable and being able to roll but that's kind of what's led me in this diffusal direction is because i think diffusal is really such a great item um so i ended up buying it more uh, there are certain games where you do have to i'm going to get into this a bit more after i after i switch off this to a different clip where i'm going to get into how your game is going and how you should let that influence your item making or your item purchasing and your decision making so there could be games where you are, you're you having a great game. Everything is going well. Maybe you don't actually need Vlad's that much. Maybe you're against a PL or some other hero like a Naga Siren, and you can greatly see how, oh, if I buy Maelstrom this game, I can be very effective. And I won't have a lot of trouble staying alive because the enemy has this hero or this hero or something like that. Maybe they don't. Maybe they, you should let these decisions influence your game a lot when you play Pango offlane. Alright, so to continue on this rant a little more, uh, I was talking about how you should let your game influence your items. Whether you're having a good game, maybe, and you're against certain heroes, you can afford to build these answers to these heroes, like um, like with the Naga Siren or PL thing, where you can buy the Maelstrom for your team, and actually deal a lot with the illusions, like you could go Maelstrom eggs. But a lot of it also depends on the heroes on the enemy team. So you could be against these heroes that are like Bane, Puck, Grimstroke, they make your game incredibly hard. And even if even if Maelstrom Eggs would be wonderful against the Naga Siren, you have to think critically and think, okay, well, will I be useful in team fights? Will I get shut down by, by a rupture? Or am I having a good enough game where I can even afford to buy these items at a decent enough timing that they're effective? Um, are just are just some of a few things that you should consider when buying your items. Uh, so so this game is a game that I played actually yesterday in Europe, where I was playing against a very high MMR Ursa player uh, in this in this Europe pub. And one thing that happened in this game was that I didn't have such a great lane. Uh, you are seeing the Ursa die right now, so this is kind of a, a bad example, but you're just going to have to believe me that this lane wasn't anything spectacular. Alright, so I know we just killed the Ursa and things are looking up, but that's not really the point that I want to make here. The point that I want to make is that in lanes that go south, you have to compensate by being unable to buy the items that you would have bought. So for this game, I would love to go something like Vlad's Diffusal. 
Power Treads, Vlad's Diffusal would look real awesome this game. But I mess up this lane. The lane was not going that bad, uh, but I decided to fight the Ursa. Uh, you're going to see that very shortly. I fight the Ursa, and he ends up killing me. And I think I pour back. I, I end up getting involved in some other fights. And I end up... I, I just I just end up not having a great game. And this is going to happen to you guys. Whether it happens in the mid lane or the off lane. Um, you're going to have these games where you're either shut down in lane. Or you have like a less successful game than you're used to. And you, you have to compensate. You can't buy the same items that you would otherwise buy. Or they'll be too slow. So in this game. Um, I don't know how many of you guys have played against the recent Ursa. But the recent Ursa is a disaster. Uh, here's here's an occasion where I die again, actually. Very, very poor play. Very poor play. But um, again, my point is is that because I'm dying so much, I can't buy the items I would normally buy. If I were to buy Diffusal, I would hit such a late Diffusal timing after my initial Vlad's purchase that it would just be unreasonable to buy Diffusal and rush it very quickly. So in this game, I do end up going the Yule Scepter right after Vlad's. Um, and the reason why it's so effective is because Ursa... Um, and after he buys all these status resistance items like he normally buys. If you've been in your pubs recently, you've seen the Ursa has been buying this Battle Fury, Sanjin and Yasha Satanic build. And if you buy Yules, you can just throw him up in the air while he's ultied. And he's just in the air for his entire duration of his ultimate. So it's a very strong item that you should buy against this hero. Um, in the same sense of responding to enemy picks, you can look at maybe there's a Queen of Pain with an Orchid. Um, that's running around the map and gonna kill you. Maybe you should consider Yules, something like that, you know? Like, if there's, a, if there's a massive risk of you dying, then you should buy certain items to try to prevent that, right? So, in this case, um, my game is, is going so poorly that I end up just needing this, this Yules because it, it's the time of the game where if I have this Yule Scepter, I'll be very effective. And so that's, that's something that I end up buying. So to show you the rest of the game really fast, it does end up going where I go Vlad's Yules, and then I buy an Abyssal to lock down the enemies a bit more, and then realizing that they are such heavily, uh, such heavy physical damage lineup, I end up going the Shivas afterwards as well. Alright, so one more thing I want to quickly mention for this game is to just tell you how exactly far behind I was. So I have, I have like 8,700 net worth. I would love to be up here where the Ursa is, <laughs> having like 18k, but I just don't. So you have to make the most effective use of the money that you have, and, and spending it on the items that I purchased this game was indeed very effective. So you can see here, I, I'm using the enemy. Um, I'd love to use him when his, arrange, uh, his enrage is active, so that I can, um, I guess, make it not last very long. But you'll see here, it's very good at shutting down the Ursa. Even here, when he presses enrage again, and he presses satanic, like, we have another Yules on our team as well. Like, our ET also has a Yules to help disable the Ursa, and then he does uh, end up dying here. I was a bit surprised that damage we do have a natural order from the Elder Titan. But that was kind of the theme of the game. Is that when this Ursa is just popping his, his ultimate ability, there really is not much counterplay besides buying the Yule Scepter. And you will find in other games, you can encounter the similar situation where, okay, well they have an Ursa, I need to buy Yules. Because any other item, like Halberd, uh, the status resistance that the Ursa has from his items will just will just be applied. So it won't really be relevant. But you can you can apply this concept to other heroes. So when you play against this, say you're against this Viper or this this TA that's super strong, you can you can say, okay, well I can buy Halberd on Pango and it'll be a pretty good counter. Or this works with other counterplay too. So say they have a Bloodseeker that wants to rupture you. If you have like a Blink Dagger, you can blink on the on the Bloodseeker so that he can't rupture you and he'll be locked down. Or if you're against a Grimstroke who's also trying to bind you to something, if you are very um, if you stay very far back and you blink into the fight, then you're much less likely to to get spells cast on you or or at the same in the same way you could buy a lincoln sphere to maybe stop these spells from being cast on you that that hurt you so much all right so one thing i wish i could do is give you guys the knowledge that i have on what items are best against certain heroes and which items you could buy against these heroes when you are ahead behind um stuff like that or or certain combinations of heroes that certain items are, are better against than others but I, I really just can't cover them all because there's so many. I can I can provide you with some examples. So this is a this is a very high MMR game where I'm playing against a Grimstroke. And one thing that you might not know is that Abyssal is actually an item that um, can counter Grimstroke very well. So this is this is the same with Puck uh, Coil as well. So here um, I've gone on the enemy. My Abyssal is still kind of on cooldown, but you'll see here I am chained. I'm for some reason 
Valve has made it so that I am chained even though I have nobody I'm chained to. But you'll see here that my Abyssal is up. So this this would work better if if the I still had a longer duration on my roll. But you can see here I'm able to cast Abyssal during my roll. So in a situation where I'd constantly be being auto-attacked or something like that. Or maybe I, I'm rolling and all of a sudden I got coiled. So I'm stuck there in the coil. Unless I choose to end my roll. Um, uh, a counterplay to that is that you can buy it. An Abyssal Blade. Now, now, this is kind of like an endgame counterplay. This, this won't really help you in the mid-game if you're having trouble against against these heroes like Puck or Grimstroke. But that's just something that, that might help. See, this, this, all I can really offer is a bunch of small tips that can hopefully help you overall, I, I guess. Alright, so one last itemization thing that I want to mention is, again, just, just noticing what items would work best in what situation. So here I have... Um, I actually just have Power Treads Crimson Guard. Uh, you might think, wow, Lucas, I never thought I'd see you buying a Crimson Guard on Pango. Vlad's, that was a bit out there. But Crimson, uh, it's kind of nuts. And when you look at the and the heroes in this game, they are very covered in cosmetics, but you can see that there is a Faceless Void, a Witch Doctor, a Visage, a Clinx, and a Puck. So you can see heavy physical damage based, you can see that the just kind of a natural counter to Visage and the birds that deal um, basically damage that is completely neutralized by the Crimson Guard. Um, you can just see that, that this item is, is very good against their team. And if you buy this Crimson Guard, I, again, I could go into the game and I could show you how as soon as I press Crimson Guard, I take no damage. But I'm just going to hope that you guys will believe me. Um, it just, just as another example of how if you just look at the heroes in the game, you can see how impactful things will things will be. And you can see later on, I, I ended up buying a Vlad's to complement my Ursa Beastmaster combination of other cores on the team. And just another example to go into about, about how certain items can be good in certain situations. And how you should just look for these situations so you can um, to get the most effective build. Alright, so I just want to give one word of caution to the people that play offlane Pango and want to buy the same items every game. Which again, I did for a long time, but then I did finally realize that there are some games where... Uh, where I need to change things up. So in this game, you can see the net worth is pretty much even, right? So both teams are doing very well. Uh, but one thing you should notice is the Pango's build. So the Pango is actually very farmed in this game. But the problem is, is that his item choices are not are not what I would have bought. So he's got a troll on his team, someone that very much benefits from having a Vlad's. Uh, he's also against very high physical damage enemy heroes, such as the TA, the Chaos Knight, the Bloodseeker. Like, things are going to get real rough. Especially if he gets ruptured swapped or something. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, the rupture is also going to be a big problem. Uh, but just buying items to prepare for this. Because if you buy these items that make you some glass cannon kind of build, you will just die instantly against certain lineups. Especially without the assistance from your teammates. So say you're playing a mid lane pango and you want to go Vlad's Diffusal. That's perfectly fine. But your net worth would be something along uh, up here. Like where the TA is right now. And you could go maybe... Maelstrom Diffusal Lincolns or something like that. But when you're playing off lane and you don't have as much net worth as as the other heroes in the game, you kind of have to diversify. You kind of have to split your items a bit more. Not not diversify. Maybe a Vlad's Yules build or some sort of Vlad's uh, Blink Dagger or Vlad's Halberd, something along those lines to help you with the rupture. Because you'll see in this fight, this Pangolier has 1100 net worth or 11,000 net worth, where the CK only has 700. But you'll find in this team fight. The CK is actually much more useful than the Pango. The Pango gets ruptured, and then the Pango dies. Uh, I realize this is a bit unfair because he does get bursted, and he could have played from a further position back to maybe roll into the fight, but he doesn't have a great way to get into the fight anyways. So there could be a situation where he has a blink dagger and he wants to blink in, and that would be great, but he is going to find himself getting ruptured 9 times out of 10 against this BKB... Uh, this BKB, I guess... Sorry, uh, what's the name of the hero? Bloodseeker. Um, and in this case, all he needs to do is stay alive longer. If he stays alive and provides disarms to his team, and also has some sort of Vlad's aura for his troll, a hero that relies so heavily on uh, lifesteal to win these fights, uh, the, the game would have gone a lot differently. So I guess that's just a word of caution for you. Alright, so real quick, before we get into the mid-build portion part, I just want to say that I do have a guide out on Steam, where if you scroll to the bottom, you can hit this subscribe button, and then when you go in game and you look for guides, my guide will show up. And the main reason that I say that this guide is useful is 
while there are a lot of tips on the page itself about um, some notes about the build and the mid game and how I believe that the, the hero should be played that I think is pretty useful. But I do really like having all the items here for me. So whenever I'm looking for items to buy, maybe there's there's some stuff I want to buy late game, then I can look down here at the builds um, or see items that I generally buy. You can see that it, it is it is littered with clarities because of how much I love the clarity item. So that's just there for you guys if, if you do want it. Alright, so like I showed you guys earlier when I was talking about the mid lane, I am starting with triple iron branch, quelling, and a fairy fire. Uh, something a little different is that I ended up rushing bottle this game. There's not really much of a difference between buying a salve and then buying a bottle versus buying a bottle then a salve. Unless you're kind of getting a teammate to ferry you or refill your bottle for you or something like that. Because typically the runes won't spawn until 4 minutes and you'll need the regen anyways uh, with the salve. And it, you don't really gain anything now that the 2 minutes, two minute runes aren't spawning in the mid lane. So that's typically my item choices. I will then end up saving up for a javelin typically after the bottle, but I will need to buy resources as I need them. So here I just bought another set of tangos. Um, turns out I didn't need a salve in this lane, which is which is interesting. Uh, I have been experimenting sometimes with the mid lane early items with an oov, but I haven't been buying it that much. I've bought it a couple times against an ember. Um, a few times I've, I've tried ring of protection as well, just because you do have a lot of excess. Uh, you have room for items in the early game. I know a lot of people buy a Wraith Band and they'll ask me why I don't buy a Wraith Band and I just think it's a bit too slow. I think it does delay your items. At the same time it does it does pressure the enemy a bit more, but I just don't I just don't think it's that worth it for me. Alright, so some stuff happens with the runes and I'm immediately going to I do end up getting my bottle refilled. I know it's pretty awesome, some crazy ganks happening. But you'll see here I do have a javelin queued up. Uh, this is a kill actually. Okay, I guess this game's going better than I thought. Uh, you can look to kill them in the mid lane um, and abuse them playing too aggressively or being a little bit kind of not overconfident, but they underestimate your hero and the damage that you can cause in the mid lane with your level 6. So here, I end up buying a lot of... <laughs> oh my god. I always look at the clarities that I buy and I, I always I always think, oh yeah, I'm going to buy some clarities. And then I just buy four. Like, that's, that's, a, that's a bit much but it really isn't that much because you think of the other items that you could be buying and I know it might not be that efficient. It's like the same concept as should you be buying three TPs right now? You're only going to use two. And while that is true, there's not really much else I'm looking to buy. Uh, so you did see earlier, I ended up buying, buying a mango as well thinking that I need it, but I think I got a regen rune. I'm not exactly sure exactly what happened. Uh, it's the first time I've looked at this replay in a while. Uh, but I just want to show over the general, uh, the general process. So I am farming the map a lot. Uh, I'll post the replay in description um, under the video as well if, you, if you're interested in watching this replay yourself. But I'm playing a very farm heavy playstyle. I'm playing a lot on the map, uh, ganking the Void Spirit a lot, abusing the fact that my lane went so well and I got a lot of help in the mid lane. So we'll see here, I do end up buying the Maelstrom. And as I mentioned earlier about the Power Treads, it very much depends on the game. If I'm in a game where I'm constantly going to be dueling someone, I compare that with if I'm in a game where I am going to be farming a lot, right? Because you, there's no point in delaying your maelstrom if you don't really need to, right? So, so power treads does grant you, grant you the attack speed. It gives you um, more survivability as well. So, if I had power treads there, maybe set on strength, maybe I would have had the extra 200 health, and it would have helped me live, for example. Okay, so we're gonna go for defusal next. Again, I'm just gonna speed through this replay just so you can kind of see my uh, my thought process here. Uh, so. Uh, I guess I guess this is pretty much it. You, <laughs> not much, not much to say. You buy defusal here now, and you're you're pretty much out of control. You do have to look at the enemy heroes very often because if I was against a Bloodseeker, I cannot play as aggressively as I'm playing in certain situations. Or if I was against, say, a Bane, I would not be able to play that aggressively because the threat of just having that one hero not showing on the map could be could be completely detrimental to my game and that's one of the reasons why those heroes are so good against pangolier is because all it takes is one hero to be not showing for you to be unable to play aggressively all right so i cut myself off there because i fumbled my words but i was basically saying that you are unable to play aggressively against certain heroes um and it's very important to see which ones are showing or which ones are not showing um and in this game i i'm free to do whatever i want um it looks like I just wiped, so whatever I was doing, I was clearly not free to do. I think I got black hold, but uh, yeah. So my item build is perfectly fine, barring I don't get 
chain stunned or find myself in the middle of five heroes or I, I don't know so so yeah it's this game's going really well uh so from here again like what i talked about earlier uh let me put the player perspective on pangolier is that it's a lot about deciding what you want to do at this point in the game so i'm not i didn't follow exactly when i bought this bracer but i do think bracer is really effective i did end up finishing my power treads actually to provide me with more durability and or survivability sorry against the the Lich and the Nyx and some combos that the enemies can pull off on my hero. I do end up liking the Bracer a lot more in certain games where I'm against like a Skywrath Mage or I don't know just these heavy magic bursty lineups I find it to be very value and you do have the inventory space like you can see here I have my stick I have my bottle diffusal maelstrom power treads and I'm swapping my Bracer in and out of my backpack to pop my clarities every once in a while when I run low on mana. So from here you are basically deciding whether you want to buy an Eggs or a Basher. And this is the most typical Pango build. So you would probably buy a Basher and then upgrade into Abyssal, or you can buy Eggs and then Basher and then Abyssal. It's probably the, the most typical build you'll see on, on this hero. Alright, so I'm not going to show this game, but I will hope that you guys will believe me. In my item build this game, where I played mid lane, I think I played against a um, Death Prophet. Uh, I don't know exactly how hard it was, but I do know that I was happy with my build this game. So this game I was able to get a 20 minute diffusal, a maelstrom diffusal, which is generally the timing that I aim for when I play mid pango. I try for a Vlad's diffusal on offlane pango as well, but sometimes it doesn't go so well as offlane, you know, you face a lot of banes and enchantresses and it can get a little difficult. But this game I was able to hit a very nice timing at 20 minutes. And here is where I'll normally look at the enemy team and where I was looking at whether I want a basher or an agonims. But then in this case I saw, okay, well, if I just buy agonims sept, or if I just buy uh, BKB here, uh, my game is pretty much just saved. Like, Death Prophet Silence is, is very, very not going to work against my BKB. Same with the Ricky Smoke Cloud. Uh, everything just becomes so much easier, and I could, um, you can see how far ahead I was. I'm able to push my advantage that I already have by already being so strong with my Maelstrom Diffusal, um, and just, just being able to cleanly win the game with my Black King Bar. Alright, so I just want to say thanks for watching this video. I know I can't cover exactly every item and when it's good on Pango. Like, I can only really offer you a selection of items and say that you should kind of just try it for yourself on what would be good in certain situations. Like, whether I want to buy this Yule Scepter or whether I want to buy a Blink Dagger to help me initiate. Like, I think that the best way of learning is to really just try stuff out yourself. So if you're in this game and you find out, oh, every time I roll in, I'm getting cursed, you know? Or, like, I play, I'm playing like normal and it's just not working. Well, then you should look at these items that, that you know so well, like Blink Dagger that you would be buying on these other heroes, and you can say, okay, well, now if I if I blink from, from a place where the enemies don't have vision, they won't see my roll coming, and they won't be able to react with Winner's Curse or, or Puck Coil. And so I hope this video just, just helped you think a little more critically about the, the items, or made you more aware of what items do exist to help you in certain situations that you would find yourself in. But I also want to stress the importance of how your game influences your items. If you're having a bad game, or if you're against heroes that don't really enable you to play like you normally would, like say a Bloodseeker or something like that, you have to adapt with your items. If you don't adapt with your items, the game will go south, and I think it'll, it'll massively decrease your chances of winning the game. So yeah, thanks again for watching. I hope you liked the video. Uh, if you want to leave a comment on what you'd like to see in the future, I'd appreciate a lot. And hope you guys have a great day.